it's not easy to answer this. But let me first start off by saying that uh, the lack of private investment as reflected in the slower growth of credit offtake from public sector banks is not the right way to look at it. Because that's exactly what people keep talking about, 4 or 5 percent rate of growth, which is you know, three decades, it's a, you know, decadal low, etc. Because you have, to, if you start including the private sector banks there, etc., you will find that it's much very different. No doubt, however, what's happened is that project lending, which was where the public sector are more focused on, as opposed to retail lending, which is where the HDFCs and the ICICIs of the world are more focused upon, project lending has has suffered, has not, has, you know, has has suffered as sort of. Um, so that's the first part. But second is that a lot of this project lending has now happened through corporate bond, uh, co corporate bond uh, issues, and which have gone enormously, I think. I'll forget the exact number again, but I think 36% growth or something like that in the corporate bond issuance. So that's where they're, they're not going to banks, but they're going to the you know, bond market to raise that uh, fixed income as the loans. The third, that the IPOs have actually picked up in a very significant way. So all those who, can, who are good enough, again, are not going to and this is, by the way, a complaint of the public sector banks that all, are, all their better borrowers have moved out and have taken recourse to this. So I think it's better, therefore, to look at the entire capital market before we say that the private sector has not invested at all. That's the second part of it is that a large part of our investment, and this is actually having talked to friends and so on, used to always have some excess capacity in built into it, which wasn't declared. And so that you made up by you know, producing stuff, which was not, you know, if you like, if you like, not taxable. Now that's changed also, and this is a very significant sector, by the way. So this change in the rules of the game, uh, the private investor is yet to come to grips with. Now either come to either to say that look, this is the new game, so we'll pay it, or in the good old Indian manner that we want to find the jugal as to how to beat it. So. That's not happening. So I think my own understanding, and I was talking to some people yesterday and the day before, is that what I would suggest is that the government sticks with what it is doing, you know, in terms of the GST, in terms of you know, and Benami properties, in terms of insolvency. And I think this will happen. This will come through in a more formalized economy. And once that happens, it will be much more sustainable than what you had in the past. So it's um, how long will that take? I would think. Um, another two quarters and maybe less. And this is where, by the way, this is the reason for which you see much more FDI than before. What do I bring from the private sector is that let's not go back to any sort of a discriminatory, subjective sort of investment regime where your only competitive advantage was that you had the inside track to the government. You just finish, yeah? it's online do it, you will get this, and this is how we do it. You know, so it doesn't matter whether you know Rajiv Kumar or not. And this can be done, and this better be done. So it's a bit more difficult. You know, but this is where you will get Indian industries finally becoming part of global and regional production chains. You notice that we are not. Why are we not? Because we are not, you know, we are not in that system of doing things. And this is what we need to put together uh, so that this can happen. Thank you.